You can't force creativity. You need wide open space to be creative. And so it's important to step away and actually take that creative sabbatical so that you can come up with your best ideas. You are listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast, episode 163. Hey there, it's Tracy Matthews, the Chief Visionary Officer over at Flourish and Thrive Academy. And I'm excited to be here today hosting this podcast because today is a very special episode. I'm going to be talking about something that is really fun, and that is my creative sabbatical. And I just spent nine weeks in Europe, most of the time off. And I say most of the time because I was at two sort of businessy work things that were also fun because I always combine work and fun. And then the rest of the time I took off, my team ran my business without me. Uh, actually, both of my businesses because I was shipping jewelry and keeping Flourish and Thrive afloat while I was gone. And I'm going to share some of the lessons that I've learned with that. I'm also going to talk a little bit more about why this is so important, not only for me, but for you to consider at some point in the framework of how you're building your business. Because ultimately, what we all want is to not be the main driver of sales and revenue in our companies. And we want to be able to have the opportunity to step back or step away when we need it, because it's important. As creative visionaries, our main purpose and goal in our business is to use our creativity to continue to grow our companies. And sometimes we need to get move into analytical mode or into business mode or managerial mode. But our genius really lies in the creative talents that we have and how we sort of foster and harness that creative talent and use it in everything that we do in our business. And what ends up happening sometimes, if you're anything like me, is that we're working, working, working. We're focusing on growing the company and working on the business. And then we get pulled back into the business and we're working in the business and doing a lot of things. And I hear designers say they have to do all the things that they have to do to run a business and it starts to suck the life out of you. And so sometimes it's important to take a step back because that's where the brilliance and the genius comes in. In fact, right before I got on this podcast, I was texting with one of my students and uh, former mastermind designers, Karina Harris of Waffles and Honey. And for those of you in the Flourish and Thrive community, I use her as an example a lot because She's someone who I've watched for many, many years go from working a full-time job to getting laid off or transitioned into a new position. And she decided to leave that company and just go after her dream full-time and made a really quick decision within a month without a huge plan. And her business just took off. And so I was talking with her and these last couple of years, she's been traveling a ton. And I was joking because I'm heading to San Francisco shortly. And uh, I wanted to meet up with some Flourish and Thrive designers and interview them for, about things that they've done in their business that are super awesome that I like to share with you guys. And she was telling me that she's going away because it's her birthday week. And I think that's so awesome and fun because there was a time when she didn't travel at all. And now she said to me something like, I'm now living my best life and I'm focused on building a business that uh, supports you know, what matters to me most, uh, which is living my best life which I love because that's exactly what I did the second time around when I was building my business. And I want to really support all of you in doing the same thing. And creative sabbaticals are awesome for that. And it doesn't even mean you have to travel somewhere if you're not a travel person like I am. But it's just about giving your mind a break and keeping your business going even when you're in that sort of stepping back stage. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. This episode was also inspired by another designer in our community who I'm going to be interviewing Karina and Kristen Baird. Kristen Baird, I've interviewed for the podcast before about her website transformation. But Kristen, I love her. Both Kristen and Karina were in our high-level program, our mastermind program when we had it, which we transitioned into our SOS coaching program now. And Kristen texts me one day and she's like, you are not going to believe this. I just got an offer from SCAD, which is where she went to school, to be their resident designer in France for two months. And so she basically had been has been working for years to set her business up in a way so that if she ever wanted to step away, that she could. And she spent two months in France and her business continued working. Last year, she was the Halstead Grant winner, which I know the application just closed a couple of weeks ago for that. And it's just awesome. It's so inspiring. Like 
This is the reason why I started Flourish and Thrive Academy with my co-founder, Robin, and why I do this podcast is to help emerging brands, help emerging designers, whether you're a jewelry designer, you're in some other industry and you feel inspired by the messages that we share here, is to show you that whatever it is that you dream about is really possible. But what it takes is a little uh, strategy or strategy and a little planning and getting your head space in the right place so that you can create a business that actually works for you and not against you. And you've heard my story before, but the first time I forayed into entrepreneurship as a jewelry designer and a jewelry maker, I had a great business. You know, I I grew it over 11 years. I was sold in 350 stores around the world, but there was a time when my business just started taking over my life and it not became not fun anymore. And it's, I just felt like I couldn't step away after a certain period of time because I kept building and building and building and growing and growing and growing. And while there were periods of time when I would take long, long breaks or long vacations, I felt that I built this like trap for myself. The bigger my company got, the more I felt trapped. And I decided this next time around that I wanted to grow a company, but also not feel trapped by it. And that that was going to mean that I was going to build an awesome team, which I've been doing over here at Flourish and Thrive. You're going to be hearing me talk a lot more about this, about how the importance of surrounding yourself with the right support and getting awesome A players on on your team, even before you think it's ready. So scary. Like right now we're in the process of hiring one to two new team members. And it's scary because, you know, every time you do that, you know, your more uh, cash goes out of the business and you have to think, okay, what do I need to up level our income to in order to get to a place where We can support that extra team. But for some reason, it always works out when you're planning and focusing on what your end goal is. And so, you know, my mission is to help create a visionary, highly creative visionary people like me and those who aren't aren't like me, but those people who are running a business, who are passionate and driven and ambitious and want to get their products out there to surround themselves with the right team so that they can do what they're best at. And so that's sort of like the inspiration behind today's episode. And a lot of that starts with setting yourself up the right way financially, which leads us a nice segue into our sponsor today, which is Accounting for Jewelers. And if you don't know about Accounting for Jewelers, you are missing out. Mariel Diaz is the founder of Accounting for Jewelers, and she has brought her lifetime of experience in the jewelry industry to accounting. She comes from a long lineage of jewelers and accountants. Her father was a really famous art jeweler. She's a graduate gemologist and she's a German trained gemstone carver and a second generation classically trained metalsmith. And I think this is important because she loves numbers just as much as she loves making jewelry. And she really understands how important it is for a jewelry business to have their numbers in check. So Accounting for Jewelers is five years old this year. It's a tech savvy accounting firm, which is based in Nashville, Tennessee, and they are serving the jewelry industry nationwide here in the U.S. And whether you're a studio artist or an established franchise, they're here to help with your bookkeeping needs. So they do full service bookkeeping, uh, registrations and taxes, verification services, financial strategy, and business advisory services. They also have a DIY training course for complete setup and maintenance of zero accounting, zero bookkeeping. And they have this really great software company that they just bought called Get Benchworks, which is an inventory management application. So definitely go on over and check out Accounting for Jewelers. You can head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash A4J, the letter A, the number four, and J. We'll also have a link in our show notes over at episode 163 and check it out. It's awesome. And you can use the code thrive by design for a hundred dollars off any course or payment plan. So definitely go grab it. And there's no expiration date. Check this out. And if you'd like to schedule a free consultation, uh, we'll also have a link in the show notes as well. All right, let's dive in to today's episode. All right, so let's dive into today's episodes. We're going to be talking about 10 lessons learned while I was on creative sabbatical because I'm always learning lessons. And uh, I'm excited because thanks to our sponsors, Accounting for Jeweler, who's bringing us this episode today, we are going to have 
a blast. So I don't know if you've heard about Flourish and Thrive Live, but it's our amazing event here in New York City. This is the last year that we're actually hosting this. And so I really hope that you can make it. We only have a couple of tickets left. I'm mentioning this because we have some really amazing people on the lineup. We're curating an entire influencer panel this year. The names are going to be announced really shortly. We're just waiting for contracts to be signed, which is incredible. Last year, our influencers, Pamela Peckerman and Don Del Russo, uh, hooked up a ton of the designers that they actually physically met at the event to get them on camera, on shows, in magazines and stuff like that. And the same is going to be true for this year. So we have some new influencers coming on. Sabine and I will be curating or hosting an amazing influencer panel. We have a great marketing panel as well, which I'm very excited about. And also, of course, our business day. The business day is the second day of the event, which is all about getting all these systems and streamlining things, getting team members supported, et cetera, and your business in a place where you could do something like take a creative sabbatical because you're surrounding with your, yourself with the right people. And obviously, there are some basic things that need to happen before you start hiring team members, but I don't want you to poo-poo the idea of getting even contractor help in the short term, because even that little bit of help can help take a lot of things off your plate, which can help you kind of get a lot more done. And I know a lot of people think of money going out of their business as like an expense instead of an investment in their growth. And I want to help you shift that mindset today, because here's what can happen when you set the back end of your business up properly. This is everything that we kind of teach you in your Multiply Your Profits course in your Multiplier Profits course, in our Multiplier Profits course, which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to start this uh, Flourish and Thrive Academy in the first place was because it was the one thing that I didn't realize I needed so badly in the beginning. And it's the one thing that I waited the longest to actually put in place in my business. And I'm so excited that I, I kind of cracked the code and figured out how to do it because my life is forever changed. And it all started with reading a book called The E-Myth, which is You've heard me talk about before, but if you haven't read that yet, make sure that you do. It's awesome. All right, so let's dive in to my 10 lessons learned while on creative sabbatical. And we can kind of flesh these out a little bit and I'm gonna tell you why these are important. So number one, my first lesson learned was that the work you do now pays off in dividends later. And so here's what I mean by this. There were many times in my life when I never thought I would be able to step away from my business. I remember the first time I ever wanted to take a long vacation. It was at a time in my career where I was not in a place where I felt like I could leave during the holiday season. I know a lot of us are so busy, uh, but I had an opportunity to go to India. Um, this was in 2004 for basically to go on an Ayurvedic retreat. I was, it was basically doing my eat, pray, love time. I'd gotten divorced a couple of years before. I was super into yoga and I was teaching and a friend of mine invited me to join her for this partial retreat that they were taking in December to go to India. And I couldn't go on the exact date. So I decided to sort of cross over. So I wasn't doing the trip alone, but going to India had been a dream of mine. For anyone who's a yogi, you probably have the same dream because it's the motherland of yoga. And this was something that I'd wanted to do for a long time. I didn't want to pass up this opportunity to go then and there. So you know what I did is I just booked it. And I'm like, the details will fall into place later. And that was sort of the beginning of me starting to do the work to set myself up so that I could step away. And here's what I mean by this. I hear from a lot of designers that they get frustrated with all the things they have to do to actually get their business going. It's, you know, all the marketing stuff, the business stuff that they have to do, you know, setting up their accounting and doing the admin work and keeping those books updated and all the other things. And I get it. It's a lot of work. I'm like a huge fan of delegation. So like, I'm always trying to outsource whatever I can so that I can get some of the stuff that feels overwhelming to me off my plate. I had a legal professional or tell me the other day that, I might be outsourcing too much of the business side of things. Well, we'll see if that's true or not. But, you know, so I take those things to heart because, you know, there might be some truth to that. But thinking about what you can get off your plate, you have to definitely have an understanding and know what's going on behind the scenes. But if you're not savvy at tech stuff or you're not savvy or data entry drives you bonkers and makes your eyes cross over, some people love it, some people hate it, then those are the things that you probably shouldn't be doing. You need to check them and make sure that the numbers match up. But it's not something that, your hands need to be dabbling in. What you need to be focusing on 
is, are the things that are actually growing your business and the things that you love doing. So basically setting up your business the right way in the beginning is something that later will allow you to do things like take a creative sabbatical. So when I left, I was terrified to leave. It, this was like a couple month process for me to be able to step away from my business because I have taken many vacations before and it hasn't been a big deal, but there max were like two weeks of me being off the grid. And then I would come back in and or people would have access to me. But my team knew that there was going to be times when I wasn't going to be on internet access and that I really actually needed to check out or else I was going to lose my marbles. And they wanted that for me too, because they knew if I were, were to step away, that I would be just a happier human being and a better boss. And they also wanted to prove to me that they could do it without me. And this is where I think it becomes super important that they could run the business without me. And that's what we've been working towards for many, many years. And so in my jewelry business, I was working on a project. Uh, as soon as I landed in Rome, I needed to get some sketches done, but I handed over to my assistant, Sarah, the sketches. We landed the project. We got the payment from the client. Sarah had the piece created in New York. There was just a few messages that went back and forth, but I clarified my vision of everything that I needed to happen really crystal clearly. And everything kind of worked like clockwork. It was amazing. And the piece was delivered in a couple of weeks. We hit the deadline for the customer. It was awesome. She was also fielding, Sarah, my assistant, was also fielding questions from new clients as they were coming in. And that's because I've trained her and we have systems for that on the back end about how we want to have it handled. And as far as Flourish and Thrive goes, you know, I empowered Abby and Ari to run the business without me. And they were in charge while I was gone. And quite frankly, Abby's in charge anyway, <laughs> even when I'm here. She's the boss of B. But it's important because like she wanted to prove to me that she could do this. And she killed it. She did an awesome job. We hit all of our sales goals. And I was so proud that the two of them worked together her and Ari worked together to help manage the team and got the whole team to buy in to their vision of what we were trying to create while I was gone to keep the ship running. And so we worked for six years to get the business systematized in a way that I can do this. Every single Monday before our meeting, Abby's collecting systems from team members so that we have a curated catalog of how to do things in the business so that if someone steps away, that someone else can step in. And this is the most important thing that you can do. And if you don't have a team yet, this can all be done by you. And all you got to do is document what you're doing. And like I said before, this is all stuff that we kind of teach and advise on in our Multiplier Profits course. But this is how you're able to take a creative sabbatical. The next thing that I learned is if you build a culture and expectations, your team will rise up. So company culture has been a huge thing for me. We have like one of our core values as a company is to always be learning and to always be sharing what we've learned with our other team members. And it's also about community and collaboration, which you've heard us talk about before, and supporting each other on those main goals. And so behind the scenes, we have this culture of collaboration because I think it's really important for me to know that my team members are empowered to do whatever it takes to get the job done. And that their ideas are valued and honored. And like one of the things that I really try to foster in the people that I bring onto the team are to bring ideas to the table. And it's not that we always go with their ideas, but it helps inspire creativity amongst the team. And maybe one person's idea will inspire a whole other train of ideas that actually turn into the strategy and the plan or help improve on something that we've already come up with. And so... What this does is it empowers your team to actually show up for you when you need to step away. And this requires a lot of trust. It is not easy, but it's something that when you set it up properly and you get your team to buy into your vision of what you're trying to create as a company and you get your team to buy into the core values of what you stand for and you empower them to actually do their job, then the rest is clockwork and it makes it easy for you to step away. The other thing that I learned, so my lesson number three that I learned, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the reason why this, I didn't talk about why this creative sabbatical was important, but I'm going to try and weave it into the learning lessons here, is that you can have a plan, but nothing works out like you actually expect it to. <laughs> so we had a plan of all the things that we were trying to complete and all the things that we were trying to do. A couple of things fell off the rails. We had some technical issues with the partner webinar that we were doing that totally sidelined a project. 
Um, I was supposed to be on something and they scheduled it for it like midnight for my time. I got food poisoning at a certain point in Barcelona. In fact, we call it Barcelona now because I had tickets to a Bruno Mars concert and I got food poisoning from the lunch I ate that day. And when I got to the Bruno Mars concert, I was barfing everywhere and I was out of commission for a couple of days, which basically like took me out of the game, not only for uh, my creative sabbatical, but even if my team needed to reach out to me and stuff like that. So it became interesting. So you can have a plan, but sometimes that that plan gets side railed and you just have to roll with the punches and be able to pivot. So remember that nothing works out like you expect. Another thing that I want to talk about in having a plan, not just with team, my plan on this creative sabbatical was to get a ton of stuff done. I wanted to write a book. I wanted to, or at least get my book outlined. I wanted to design an entire new collection. I wanted to come up with a ton of blog content for my website, for my uh, jewelry website. I wanted to get all my autoresponder sequences set up. Guess what I did? Nothing. (laughs) And here's the reason why. I didn't map out any of this. I started writing one blog post. I think that was the most that I did. And the reason why is because when I approached this creative sabbatical and I was coming into it, I was completely burned out. I was exhausted and stressed out. And I just needed to give my mind a break. And all you visionaries out there, when you burn that creativity, you know, you're burning it at both ends. What can happen is something really tragic. You know, you lose it and you have to somehow take a step back so you can get that spark back. I mean, I've been learning this from my mentors and healers for years about you know, taking time for self-care and taking time to meditate and taking time for long walks and creating space for creativity. But sometimes you just can't do it because you're reacting to so many things that are happening in your business. So you literally need to pull yourself out of the game. And that's what happened. And I had all these things planned. And at the end of the day, I didn't get any of it done. And I was disappointed at first. And then I realized that this is exactly what I needed was to lay on a lounge chair, drink rosé, ride a bike around the south of France, network with some people. I did work a little bit while I was in uh, Rio Maggiore at a writing workshop. And I did network and learn some things a little bit while I was at in Croatia at a, another conference. But at the end of the day, the other times were really spent just enjoying life. And that was the most important thing. I did have to pop in for a few Facebook Lives here and there to get a little work done. But I was fine with that because that's what this was all about. Lesson number four is... Meeting new people inspires new ideas and makes you think differently. So I had a really great opportunity on this trip to go to a conference in Croatia hosted by friends of mine over at Baby Bathwater Institute. And it was awesome. There were 150 entrepreneurs on this private island in Croatia. It was an amazing situation and scenario. And it was just awesome to meet. I meet a lot of people and it was awesome to meet so many people that I'd never met before. I learned so much about YouTube video ads and using content to promote, to build the know, like, and trust factor, how to run more effective Facebook ads, just so, so many things and so much more than that. And I developed some really great friendships. The person that I was roommating with, because they they sit you in these bunks with a roommate, was um, someone who has this vegan clothing brand. And I learned so much about how she's become an influencer in the vegan space and how that has helped her elevate her brand just by leveraging, you know, a really strong brand positioning, which is her commitment to veganism and avoiding animal cruelty. So it really inspired me to think differently about how I was putting myself out there as an influencer, as someone who wants to build a strong brand around this idea of creatives are the new nerds and visionaries rule the world. Because this is like my new messaging and new platform about how we can get to the next level. So the more that you can develop a brand positioning and stuff, et cetera, the more you can really leverage that to grow your business. But that's a little bit besides the point. Lesson learned here is really about meeting new people. But the other thing that was really cool is that the first night or the second night I was there, I was in Rome, got hijacked by this Roman guy, an Italian guy who wanted to walk me to my dinner. Long story short, I'm not going to tell the whole story here because it's a story for another day, but he eventually tried to swindle me for some euro. And I said, no, and he spit on me. And I decided to change my plans and go to a different place for dinner than I was originally planning. He spit right in my eye, which is like another story. I got away from him, which is good, but ultimately ended up 
having dinner at this place called Da Enzo. And I got there thinking I was going to have to wait about another hour for dinner. I was starving. And I was just a single person there. And there was another woman there that was waiting for a table for one as well. She'd been waiting for an hour and we got hooked up to sit at the same table. And it was awesome because I got to share the story of everything that happened with this guy spitting in my eye and trying to swindle me for money and how he kind of like was trying to romance me into that positioning. And I learned a lot more about how she is out as a millennial trying to, you know, position herself as a digital marketer. And so we had this great lesson. We were actually in the process of hiring some, a marketing specialist and we had this great conversation about jobs in the market and stuff like that. And so we stayed connected. So Sasha, if you're listening, it was great meeting you and having dinner with you. Uh, but it really um, helped me just think about things a little bit differently in my life and my business. And I hope that meeting new people and really making the effort to go to conferences and events to meet people can become you know, a habit of yours because it's really one of the best business building things that you can absolutely do. So I hope that I see you on the list for Flourish and Thrive Live. We'll definitely have a link in the show notes below. You can head on over to episode 163 if you want to check out tickets. We have very few left at this point, but being there in person is really, really important because that's where you get to connect with the people and meet the influencers. And we have some just amazing people on the lineup this year, which is really awesome. This segues me into the next story, which is all about taking risks. So I am going to tell you a little bit more about the guy who's fit in my eye now, because this is where the, it really fits into this part of the story. So long story short, I was walking to dinner. Let me back up because <laughs> uh, I had the meeting story about meeting someone at dinner because the guy spit in my eye. But now I'll tell you the full story. So I was walking to dinner and I knew exactly where I was going. I was going to the Trastevere area. And I was trying to make this reservation. I was hitting a really tight timeline at Antica Pesa, which is a restaurant that is really well-known, Roman restaurant. Booking along this way, this Italian guy walks up to me and asks, starts speaking to me in Italian. And I'm like, I don't speak Italian in English. So he starts chit-chatting with me. Where are you from? What do you do? Starts walking with me. Where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to dinner. And he's like, let me walk with you. I'll show you a shortcut. So he takes me through this shortcut through a neighborhood. And I was like, this guy's taking you for a ride, Tracy. But I had my GPS open. So I knew I was like still walking in the proper direction, just in a different way. So he tries to show me around this one area of town and pretend like it's like this hidden area, which was, it was nice and stuff, but it, you know, whatever. It was just like a neighborhood. And he's like, well, you know, and he's chit-chatting with me and we're having a nice conversation. And it was nice, I have to admit. He was sharing with me a little bit bit more about Roman culture and the history of Rome. And uh, sort of what it's like to live in Italy as an Italian, et cetera. And so I was listening to this and listening to his story. And and at one point he's like, hey, you know, like, I don't have dinner plans. And I know you're going to dinner. Do you want to eat together? And I was like, sure. So we get to, we start walking to the restaurant. He's like, I know a place. Why don't you bail on your other restaurant? This place is so much better. And one thing that I do know is that taking recommendations from people who live in a city who actually like live there is better than reservations from something like TripAdvisor a lot of the time, because those are the places that where the locals eat. So he takes me to this place and I was like, I don't know about this place. They're serving these big, and it was kind of risky for me to go with this random dude. He was trying to hold my hand and trying to get like a little physical with me. And I was kind of just like shaking it off. And we get to this restaurant and I'm like, what are you doing, Tracy? And I go to the bathroom. We put our name on the list. I go to the bathroom and I had a little talk with myself. All right, well, Tracy, at least if nothing else, this is a funny story at the end of the day that you can share with your audience and or your friends if it's not something to share with your audience. So I go back down and our table's almost ready. We sit outside. He sits down to the table and says to me, Tracy, you know, I forgot my cash. So can you spot me 50 euro? I think that that's like what dinner will cost with an appetizer, a beer and a, you know, entree. And I said to him, because at this point I was like, he's totally, you know, swindling me. I said, I just was like, no. And I just said, no, I'm sorry. You know, I can't. And he's like, well, I don't have any money. And I said, well, I'm going to go to my the restaurant that I wanted to go to then. Because Da Enzo was the place, the other place that I wanted to go to if I wasn't going to make this reservation. And so I'm like, you should stay and eat by yourself. Because I really, I'm like, how could you have left without a wallet? But maybe he didn't really didn't have the money. I'm not sure. So I get up, he follows me out and he said, can I have five euro for my time? And I was like, oh my gosh, dude, you hijacked me on the street. I wasn't even like seeking help or advice. I had my headphones in. I was listening to a podcast, all this stuff. And um, 
I said, no, because at that point I was just like frustrated because I, he was just totally trying to take me for a ride. And I, you know, he spent a half hour of his time, you know, that's his problem. So I said no. And then all of a sudden I heard him huck a loogie and he spit right in my eye. And I was just like, oh my God. So I pushed him, probably said something, a swear word or something at him. But there was enough people around that I felt safe. And I just started booking in the direction of the restaurant that I wanted to go to. And that's where I met Sasha and had a lovely dinner. But it, it is a good story. And it's also a lesson learned that sometimes you have to take risks in order to get to a place, because I probably would have never gone to Donzo nor talked to Sasha. We had a great conversation. She gave me some wonderful recommendations for where to go in Lisbon, which was my next trip after this. And it was awesome. So it's important that sometimes you have to take risks in order to kind of see what you can't see. Lesson number six, everyone has their way of doing things, even if they say they don't. So this is really important because, you know, we talk a lot about here about having systems in your business and we all have our own way of doing things in our business, whether or not we think so. So I mentioned this story. I was doing a masterclass a couple of weeks ago all about this, this topic. And I remember one of my bookkeepers way back in the day when I was in San Francisco, Lori saying to me, she said something along the lines of, I said, she's like, Tracy, you really need to like, organize your business or something like that. I'm like, well, can you help me organize it and help me set up systems in it? She's like, no, because if I set them up for you, you're never going to use it if it's not your way of doing things. Didn't really understand what she meant by that in the moment. I completely understand what she means by it now. We all have our way of doing things, whether it be how we stack the dishwasher, how we fold laundry, how we post on social media, how we write, how we make our jewelry, how we enter stuff into our accounting system. We have our way of doing things. And whether or not you think you do, you do. So real fun story. I got invited after this workshop that I was at in Rio Maggiore to go to my friend's house in Antibes. She has a beautiful home in the south of France. And I love the south of France. I'd only been once before. And I was really excited to go back. And a couple of times she asked me to help with things or asked me to do things. And my friend does not, English is not her native language. And so she speaks very fluent English, but occasionally sometimes there are words or the ways that she says things that are not, they don't translate the same way in English because she's speaking in several different languages. She thinks in several different languages. So there was a time when she was like, uh, help me, help us prepare the food. And I said, how would you like that done? She's like, I don't care, just do it. And then after she had instructions for how she wanted things done. Later, she asked me to do something with laundry and help her out. And of course I was like, for sure, but I did it wrong because I didn't understand what she was asking because she didn't share with me like her vision for that. And so things like this kept happening over and over again. So I started to learn to adapt to like her way of doing things because I didn't know that like, you know, for instance, like they, in her mind, she had a very specific idea of when she wanted to leave, let's say to go to the beach. And we were riding on scooters. And so we had to carpool unless we wanted to walk. So the first day she just popped in and said, are you ready to go? And I wasn't ready to go because I didn't know that there was a time that we were, I was trying to get ready as fast as I could, but I didn't realize we were stuck on this specific time frame of like just, you know, 15, 20 minutes. So I learned to ask, you know, like, when do I need to be ready? Tell me exactly when you're ready to go because she's a very timely person and what I need to know in order to set myself up for success. And with that communication, we all started laughing and she was like, okay, here you go. And we were able to get it done. And so it's just about setting expectations and letting the people around you know how to get things done your way. This is really important in life and business. And you can't expect someone else to know how to do it your way if you don't tell them. And so this is why documenting systems for your team and for your company is so important so that when and if you want to bring people in, they're prepared and it gets done the way you want it done all the time, every time. All right, let's dive into lesson number seven. Creativity requires space. So before I left, I was in a really bad place. I was feeling totally burned out. I was required to come up with all these creative ideas and I had no inspiration. And so I basically just like frazzled my creative edge all the way to like burned it at both the candle at both ends and wasn't feeling creative. And it wasn't until I allowed myself to have some space that I actually 
felt inspired about a lot of things. So I mentioned earlier that I didn't do much on my creative sabbatical, but by the end of it, I was feeling so creative and I was having ideas for a bunch of different things, including a whole slew of podcasts that I will be recording and uh, ideas for my book, which have transformed and transmuted or whatever you want to call it, and ideas for collections and designs and different things that I'm working on. And so I want to just encourage you and remind you, my mentors have said this, it's like you can't force creativity. You need wide open space to be creative. And so it's important to either block your days and block out creative days in your week or block out creative days in your month or step away and actually take that creative sabbatical so that you can come up with your best ideas. Because it is truly my belief that highly visionary creative people will use their creativity to do incredible things in the world. And so this is why I really believe that creatives are the new nerds, because we are coming up with ideas that are outside the box and innovative that help fuel companies and grow commerce and make things happen, you know, and we're the ones who stay ahead. So I really want you to focus on honing in that creativity that you already have, but really expanding on it so you can come up with great ideas. Lesson number eight, sometimes we really need to relax our body and do nothing. So if you're anything like me, you are not very good at resting. Like I can barely even sleep. In fact, I, um, sometimes we'll only sleep like five to six hours a night. I know that's not good, but I like to move and get stuff going. I get exhausted at the end of the night, but I also know that, or at the end of the day, I should say, I get exhausted. But I also know that, you know, when, when the morning comes, like I'm always awake before my alarm goes off, which is so annoying to me because sometimes I just, I really do want to sleep longer because my body knows it's time to get up and that so many exciting things are going to happen. But sometimes we just need to do nothing. And I'm one of those people who I'm the first person at the gym. I'm always active. If I can walk, I'd rather walk than take a car or cab. I'm always like this. And so I've always been like this. And so sometimes we need to step back from that and just let our body like relax and do nothing. I'm not really good at it. And I had planned on listening to all these audiobooks and doing a lot of things with my time there. I had so many plans. <laughs> None of the plans happened, <laughs> which brings me back to uh, <laughs> lesson number two, right? Anyway, or actually lesson number three. But what, so what I ended up doing was not listening to the audiobooks because my cell phone was burning out and I didn't have like a strong enough spare battery to charge the phone for very long. So instead, I just ended up laying there and just enjoying nature and having a glass of rosé here and there. And that was great because like, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't have a big agenda. You know, I was just cruising back and forth and enjoying everything that was in front of me. And it allowed me to really experience and be in the moment, which is something that I really need. Lesson number nine was to be open to something better. So this was a big one for me because I was getting really down on myself that I wasn't getting the stuff that I planned done on this creative sabbatical. And it was hard. It was hard to feel like I'd failed. I'd really wanted this space away so I could work on some creative projects. I didn't do anything. But what I realized is that I was supposed to do nothing because I needed that space to actually refresh and rejuvenate myself. And that was the best part about it. And I think that being open to something better, one of the things that I really did spend time doing, even though I keep saying I did nothing, was evaluating what I'm doing in my life. What is important to me? Why do I value it? You know, how are the relationships supporting the bigger vision of what I want to move towards? And are the relationships that I'm actually like engaged in or involved in, whether it be love relationships or friendships, are they really supporting what matters most to me. And some interesting things happened. You know, I've been able to have some really difficult conversations with people in my life. You know, to talk about the way a relationship is going, it's too personal right now, so I can't really talk about it. But, you know, in a certain respect, which may or may not even move forward, some people from my past have resurfaced, which has been great because I had dinner with my dinner with lunch with a friend, dinner with another friend this weekend, this past weekend, who I hadn't seen in a long time. One of them I hadn't seen in three years. The other one I hadn't seen in a year. And they were really good friends of mine who I spent a lot of time with before. And 
they both live in New York City. So there's really no reason. It's just that life got busy for all of us and our priorities shifted temporarily. But it was so good to see, see them both for different reasons and catch up. But I think sometimes like it puts things into perspective that being busy and active all the time isn't really the answer. It's more about enjoying the ride and enjoying what's in front of you. So this creative sabbatical allowed me to really take a step back and evaluate what's important to me so I can continue to move in that direction. And I know that working all the time is not what I value a- anymore. And I'm, I've been working on setting up my businesses in a way that really support what it is that I should be doing and which is speaking on stages and getting um, my message out there about creativity and how it really creatives rule the world and how visionary leadership is evolving and how visionaries really need to be supporting themselves with the right people in order to reach their goals or else they're always going to feel stifled. So if you ever felt that way, trust me, I hear you. And at the end of it all, lesson number 10 is really that there's no place like home. I ended up extending my trip by four or five days because my friend mentioned to me that there were some sales in Milan and I didn't want to miss out on the sales because I get serious FOMO. And then all the design houses were having 50% off of everything that they do. Well, that was sort of like a, not the whole truth because everything's a little bit less if you're, if it's a European brand and you're buying it there because you get the VAT back and also there's import tax for importing things in the U S and it ends up being, I don't know, about 10% less on the front end. And then you get the VAT back, which ends up being about all in about 20 to 25% less. So that's good. That's for regular priced items. And for the sale things, not everything was on sale, but I wanted to go because you know, how awesome would it be to be at this first Saturday sale that they start in Milan and be there when it actually happens? So yes, I did score some deals. I did score some other stuff that was not like as great of a deal. And I'm happy I stayed, but I was so ready to go home at the end of it. And I realized that there was really just no place like home. By the time that I left that sabbatical, I was really ready to sleep in my own bed. I was ready to come home and embrace my city of New York and ready to come home and just be here. And then 10 days later, I had to get on a plane again to go back to LA. But at the end of the day, you know, home is where the heart is. And all these lessons, whether you're thinking about the work now that you're doing that will pay off later, you're thinking about how to build a culture around your business that will help your team like really raise up and step into their roles. And whether or not, you know, you have a team yet, it's really about creating that company culture, knowing that when you have a plan, sometimes it might get side railed and, you know, it's good to have one, but Nothing really works out as you expect it to. And remember that. that, And remember that meeting new people inspires new ideas and makes you really think differently about the world and gets you outside of that framework that we get ourselves stuck in. Another great lesson is that sometimes you have to take risks in order to get to the other side. You know, I'm so grateful for that crazy story in Rome and how that like led me to meeting this wonderful person. And that everyone has their own way of doing things, including you. So it's important to get those things documented so that you're setting people up who uh, come and encounter your business and you're setting yourself up for success to make things run a lot more smoothly so that your business can continue to grow. That creativity requires space. You always have to remember that. Lesson number seven, super powerful. And I'm diving into my self-care moment here that we need to relax our bodies a lot and do nothing. So if you're someone like me who's go, 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 getting so much done, or you're running around chasing your kids or whatever it is, take time to just do nothing, whether it's every single day, whether it's 30 minutes to meditate, shavasana and yoga, whatever it is, relax, relax, don't do it. (laughs) Just kidding. Do relax. I'm just joking. Anyway, no matter what you put out there, I just, if things don't go your way, I want you to always think about being open to something better because this is the most important rule of life that if not this, something better, you know, we can make wishes, we can make affirmations, but what we really want is the best case scenario so we can live our best life, right? And then remember, there's no place like home. So cherish the, the home you built, cherish the home that you're born in and keep that going. All right. I am so excited that I got to do this creative sabbatical. It was one of the most awesome vacations I've ever taken. And I'm saying, even though I was just in Europe, I've been to Europe so many times that sometimes when I go back, I'm like, oh, I'm going to Europe again. I'm not taking this adventure into some new land, but that's okay because I'm okay with that because sometimes we need to go back to places that we feel a connection to. And I don't know if you know this, but I was 
European studies major in college. And so this is really bringing me back to a lot of the stuff that I studied back in the day and kind of brings it back home for me. So anyway, I want to wrap up this episode reminding you that your job as the visionary of your company, if you uh, think of yourself as a chief visionary officer, is to be working mostly in your creative zone of genius and to be fostering that creative creativity over and over and over again and building and using that creativity to continue to build your business. And you do that by setting your business up the right way. So if you haven't checked out our Multiply Your Profits course, you might want to take a look at it. And by surrounding yourself with the right support. I'd like to invite you to our live event here in New York City. We have just a few tickets left. Uh, We are about to close ticket sales because we're almost sold out. And it's an amazing event. It's happening September 26th and 27th here in New York. Uh, We have an opportunity for people coming to do a maker video shoot. Uh, We've coordinated production on that. If we haven't sold it out by the time that this podcast airs, uh, we last time we sold it out in, in just a couple of days. And we've already sold out the first day. So if you're interested in a maker shoot, just follow us over to the FlourishThriveAcademy.com website and reach out to us and we can hook you up. But also come to our live event. It's amazing. It's a two-day event. It really focused on helping you build connection in your business and using that connection to attract the perfect clients over and over again. The main focus of the conference this year is all about, as I mentioned, connection, but using your website as a tool to connect not only to your perfect clients, but to create messaging and brand story that connects your brand in the bigger space of the world. And so the day will be structured on uh, with uh, a bunch of keynotes, me teaching. We're having breakout sessions with our amazing contributors and sponsors. We have several panels happening. Uh, one of them is an influencer panel, which is going to be so amazing. And uh, I'm very excited to announce the influencers on the panel. I'm just waiting for the contracts to get signed so that we can seal the deal. And by the time this episode goes live, I'm hoping that I have some to report. And then we have some great speakers, including Sabina Hitchin, Susie Moore, Ingrid Helke of Profits First, who's going to be talking about how to get your business profitable, Robin Kramer, my co-founder over here at Flourish and Thrive, of course, me, and so many more. So I really want to encourage you to come. It's going to be an amazing event. All right. um, And I want to thank our sponsor, Accounting for Jewelers. If you need help with your bookkeeping and or want to get your zero program set up, definitely reach out to them. We will have links in the show notes for all this stuff. Head on over to floristhriveacademy.com forward slash episode 163. This is Tracy Matthews signing off. If you like the Thrive by Design podcast, I would be so grateful if you wouldn't mind just popping on over to iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast and give us a little rating and a review. This really helps us know that the content that we're delivering to you is stuff that you want to hear about. And we'd love to just hear from you anyway. So if you want to pop on over to our Instagram and send us a direct message, we are at flourish underscore thrive. We love hearing from our members and make sure that you follow us if you aren't already doing so. All right, I'll talk to you soon, guys. We have a great episode coming up next week. See you later.